Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish, and welcome to a mod spotlight for Total War Attila. Today, we're taking a look at a brand new mod that is currently in development. I should say the early stages of development, to be precise. This mod looks to bring in the Seven Kingdoms and Game of Thrones universe into Total War Attila and the Grand Campaign, adding in new religions, units, uh, buildings, abilities, generals, all that lovely stuff to go ahead and give a really awesome Game of Thrones experience. I'm really surprised that someone hasn't done this before well i'm not necessarily surprised because i know the mod tools for total war attila and rome kind of suck so that's probably why no one's attempted it but you know i'm surprised no one's given this a go on total war thrones of britannia because that map seems like it could be a great sandbox for the game of thrones but i guess it's a lot of work porting over a lot of assets from attila into thrones of britannia but anyway so yes this mod looks to bring in all that lovely stuff along with the units of the seven kingdoms total war mod which is what you're seeing on in the background right now that that mod added in amazing units, armor, generals uh, to the custom battle, and I assume this modder is trying to like bring them into campaign along with adding in a nice Game of Thrones flavor. So what we'll do is we'll jump into the campaign. We'll take a look at really the the blocking that's gone on throughout the campaign map, seeing where factions start. At the moment, only the crown lands are like in a playable state. Uh, you can see the Kingdoms of Westeros and the Crown Lands. To ignore this, this is not how the factions are set up. But yeah, you can see that there's some of the units are already in here. You see the Crown Lands are being governed by Flavius Augustus. So not quite. This is a uh, obviously a, you know, a King's Guard right here getting ready to defend the, uh, the King's Landing. So yeah, we'll jump into the campaign and we'll take a better look at the actual setup. Okay guys, we are now in the campaign. I've played about six turns just so I could grab myself a Spire and move Fog of War so we can see everything that the campaign has to offer so far. Obviously, as I said, it is still very much in early development. And on that point, the modder who is currently developing this is looking for a 2D artist to help him create building icons and I imagine other stuff like that. So if you guys want to go ahead and help out and you're a good 2D artist, uh, go ahead and join my Discord and I can go ahead and let you guys know what his name is on Steam. Just ask me in my general chat or something and I'll hook you guys up with a line to him um, because yeah he's looking to obviously I imagine rechange all of these buildings and stuff just to make them again feel more Game of Thronesy and that's something I think is going to be essential with the success of this mod is kind of removing yourself from being in Europe and the East and actually making you feel like you're just kind of in a deformed Westeros and Essos and I think again one of the great things that would need to happen with this mod is changing these names right here of every single province so that you know you're not just in um i don't even know where this is but you're just not in mediolanium you know you're in king's landing you're not just in winter you know a random place over in the east you're in winterfell and so on and so on it kind of you know crossing over the twins to go into a certain place it just again makes you feel like you're actually in westeros even though the map is maybe you know very very deformed so as you can see, he has changed, I believe, the names of all the starting areas so far. So we have King's Landing over here. We have Dragonstone. I don't know whether the... the yeah, we've got High Garden over here. We've got pike you know so he's went ahead and just changed the basic capitals of each faction to go ahead and give them a bit of flavor so far and as we can see only the crown lands really have their units into the game so far i'm sure each other faction will get the units in at some point obviously as he goes to you know jump in and develop that faction but they are blocked out in the campaign right now but as you can see we do have the normal gold cloaks you know defending king's landing and you can recruit some faith of the seven some small like militia and some gold cloaks the units are also also tied to buildings as well right now so for example if I was to recruit a rallying field you can see that you can see on the left hand side that you've got the uh, you know the, the units we can now recruit and it will go on so down you know if you want to keep on improving your men you can go ahead and go down this route as well as that, you have kind of some alliances. Everyone is allied to King's Landing at the beginning, to the Crown Lands. However, things quickly break apart. I think in the six turns, I ended Stannis declared war on me. And you can already see he's starting to push down into Dawn, which is down here in the south. So yeah, that's a good eye point. Let's go ahead and take a look at where all the factions are set up. So over on Great Britain, we do have the forces of the Greyjoys. The Iron Islands are off on their own island. It seems very fitting that they are over there. The Reach is going to be positioned in the Fertile Lands of France and also over in Spain. 
Dawn is going to be down in Africa or the north of Africa right here. Um, now, I don't think Stannis starts with this. I think Stannis is literally just going on a tear, pouring into Carthage and going down further and further closer to Libya, uh, which is pretty brutal. He also owns, I believe, yeah, Stannis also owns Crete and, um, yeah, he also owns Crete and Rhodes as well, I guess giving him more of that kind of Dragonstone-esque feel. Then we have the Riverlands, which are kind of situated in between uh, the Western factions or the Southern Lords, if you were on a map of Westeros and the North, they're going to be kind of kind of separating the two factions. We have the Vale down in the Rocky Mountains of Greece and the Balkans, which I think is quite fitting for them. Because you have to kind of, I guess one of the big challenges with this as we see, see the Eerie. Not quite you know, what we'd expect from the Eerie. But again, maybe stuff like this can change. And you can maybe add in a few different cities and stuff. Which actually make them look a bit more you know, like the cities in Game of Thrones. Um, unfortunately, I don't think they can change the campaign map at all. Or at least it's extremely, like almost close to impossible to do so. But maybe they can change just the look of these like kind of sprites for the buildings and stuff. And the cities to make them maybe look a bit more Game of thrones -y. It could be a great approach to the mod itself. So, yeah, that's what I was saying. One of the hard, I imagine, the really hard things is deciding, you know, where to put these factions. You know, obviously, this mountainous area of the Balkans does suit the, the Vale, but is it really kind of the right setup, right positioning? If you think about Westeros, I guess it is quite hard to uh, to design it. You have to try and get the right, you know, terrain and atmosphere, as well as try and position them quite, you know, close to, to other stuff. Um, so, yeah, we have the Vale down there, as we said, the Riverlands. The uh, Lannisters are up to the north, and... I don't know if the Lannisters... I think the Lannisters have actually lost some land to the Riverlands uh, to begin this. I think they've lost this to a roaming random horde that I think is still Attila-based. But yeah, I believe that they, they held these two provinces and maybe these two as well. Actually, maybe they hold this entire section. I think the Lannisters hold this entire section in the center, kind of basically the whole of Ger uh, Germany and maybe Denmark and, you know, going down here as well into, like, Switzerland and stuff. I believe they hold all of that. And the Riverlands have just attacked and kind of taken a bit more territory. Then as we continue to go over, we have the Twins up here in the Freyland. Um, that's also a really cool thing the modder has done. And again, I think it's something really important uh, that he does do. Is again, change these names. So you can see you've got the Crown Lands here. You've got the Stormlands down to the south. Um, and as you can see, yeah, this is the Stormlands are down in the uh, south of Italy. And the central parts of Italy holding Rome and stuff going into the Crown Lands. Which I actually missed out them. Um, but yeah, so like I think that's really important changing. Just even changing these names is really good. Then over as we go over to the north of like Russia and Eastern Europe. Um, I guess more Poland than any, uh, Poland's like Poland, Lithuania, etc. Um, we have the north and all of their vassals. So this is something I quite like that the modder has done. It is going to add added in individual houses. And maybe this is something that could work quite nicely for every faction going forward. I'm not sure if it would work, but it'd be kind of interesting. I guess the North is quite available to do this just solely because they're so big so they can kind of have these houses without the north faction feeling or the stark faction feeling underwhelming whereas the other lot the other factions are a lot smaller so maybe it's harder to do this but yeah it's kind of cool having the umbers and the car starks and uh the glovers and i believe we have a knight's watch out here as well at castle black is that castle black i believe it is um, yeah, last half right there. So that's just so cool. Seeing these buildings is just really awesome. And this area, after I think about 10 turns in the campaign, gets extremely snowy. So, you know, it's no longer lush green grass. So, yeah, so you have Castle Black right here. Um, you even have one of the uh, Coles right here as well. Cole Morrow, um, who has come up from the Free City States, which again are in the game. As you can see, Castle Black comes down here. Um... So yeah, then you have the city-states right here, which is kind of scattered across, being raided as they go. We also then have a few of these nomadic city-states down here to the south. I believe we have another, yeah, we have Car Drogo over here, really far east, and then also uh, a few other Dothraki factions, which are kind of out in the Dothraki Sea really nicely positioned right there as well as that you also have if we can find them i'm not sure whereabouts they are you also have a white walker and a Daenerys targaryen faction as well which are going to be roaming hordes so i believe this faction are the white walkers and then you obviously have Daenerys targaryen i imagine changing these sprites will be pretty important again for the game to feel you know very game of frenzy but i definitely dig the you know attention to detail just keep in mind whilst you're watching this, a lot of this is just blocking out, kind of sticking factions where they should go, and then adding in depth and flavor to them. And, you know, more events and stuff, you know, having 
you know, uh, the the White Walker faction turn up 50 to 100 turns up into the campaign would be awesome. You know, you just suddenly hear rumors throughout the entire first 100 turns about this White Walker threat, and then they just suddenly spawn, like, all the way over here, and they're kind of like the... Uh, they're kind of like the Mongol threat just invading Europe and you know, descending. Because Attila does kind of have that Game of Thrones feel, right? It's very much about you know the end of the world uh, with the Genghis Khan coming flying in with his horde burning as he goes. And that's very much, you know, the Game of Thrones with the White Walkers descending from Castle Black and, you know, beyond the wall, these other people coming in and burning and, you know, taking over and raising, not quite raising dead, but, you know, it kind of does have that same feel to it. So I think this could actually make for a really, really exciting campaign. As well as that, I believe there are four religions currently in the game that have been worked on. We might be able to see our faith of the seven religion. Uh, how would we see it? Like this, and then go to summary maybe yes yeah, so as you can see there are there's still some these obviously need to be removed and my man right here got his hacky on and he's obviously invisible posse right there uh, as you can see obviously it's a work in progress etc but you can see the faith of the seven is currently enacted right now and I believe there's drowned gods there's a plenty of other stuff um, and then uh, uh, there's drowned gods old gods uh, lord of light and obviously um, Faith of the Seven, and each of these will give bonuses to each of the factions. I think it's also quite important to change, maybe change the look, if not the names of the spies and stuff. Just like small details like that, I think will really kind of take this mob from just kind of like a reskin to a Game of Thrones campaign. And really develop it. Something as well, I would, I think, is extremely important. Is and it doesn't seem extremely important, but changing the skill trees to fit Game of Thrones and not just say melee attack when fighting Romans and stuff like that. I think is, and obviously the, the having you know legionary trees, you know, like having you know, morale plus three versus Barbarian Kingdoms when you're playing a Game of Thrones mod completely kills your immersion. So I think even though these are small changes and maybe not a priority right now, having this done and having this feel, you know, unique and interesting and in-depth, I think is like one of a key point to making a mod which is supposed to be a, or a game which is supposed to feel like a tiller, feel like something completely different. Because you know, that's a key part, part of your campaign is your characters and I think definitely in Game of Thrones it is as well. So I think that's going to be about it for this little spotlight. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully this is now on your radar and you guys are going to be keeping an eye on it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be keeping you guys up to date and obviously playing this whenever there's a you know more complete version ready to be taken on. If you are a 2D artist and you want to help out with this mod, as I said, join my Discord. Um, just let me know or just DM me on Discord asking and I will go ahead and hit you guys up so you can go ahead and talk to the person creating this mod. And yeah, it's really exciting. I'm I'm super, you know, looking forward to this. Hopefully, it'll turn out well. And I'm just surprised someone hasn't tried to do it beforehand because I think you know Game of Thrones is such a big IP that it could really do good in a Total War engine. And as I said, I'm just surprised no one's done this in Attila or Thrones of Britannia yet. And it's awesome to see a modder is giving it a go. So a massive shout out to him. And yeah, if you guys are excited for this, go ahead and drop a like and a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, then make sure to subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys in the next one.